we're going to talk about indirect question in this video on section 140 of Hanson and Quinn's Greek Unintensive Course. Hanson and Quinn talks about it on pages 526 to 528. Indirect question is what it sounds like. You can ask a direct question, what are they doing? But if we report it, that becomes an indirect question. She asks what they are doing. So there we are talking about what she's asking, and that means we're going to put that question in, but indirectly. You can see that in English, the word order changes a bit, and we make other adjustments in different tenses and with different pronouns and adverbs when we express questions indirectly in English. But we're going to talk about how to do it in Greek. So you remember that in indirect statement, there were three different ways to express statements indirectly when you had reported speech. I'm happy to say that indirect question only has one, and it is very much like one of the ones you learned for indirect statement. So for indirect question, the one rule is that it's got a main clause with a verb of the head, often that verb of the head will be a verb of asking. She asks, she inquires, um, she requests, something like that. But it can happen, of course, with verbs of knowing, verbs of learning, and verbs of perceiving as well. Indirect questions actually happen in quite a lot of situations, not just with verbs of actual asking. So you'll have an introductory clause with a verb of the head of one of these sorts. And then instead of introducing the indirect question with a haughty or a host the way we do with indirect statement finite construction, we're going to have an indirect interrogative, which is why you bothered to learn hostis, hatis, haughty, and why you just spent time learning about all of those correlative pronouns, adjectives, and adverbs and one of those forms was always an indirect interrogative, which is what you're going to need here. Then for the verb of your indirect question, you will look at whether we are in primary or secondary sequence. And if we are in primary sequence, you'll use the same mood and tense as the direct question would have, although the person may change. And if we're in secondary sequence, all indicatives are supposed to become optatives of the same tense, although again, the person may change. The negatives will stay the same, and I'll just go ahead and tell you that occasionally, even when you're in secondary sequence, the indicatives stay indicatives and don't become optatives. So what we're going to do for the rest of this video is look at a whole lot of examples so you can see some of the variations before you embark on reading them in other situations. So here's our rule, and we'll start with tis a, who are you? There's our direct question, and if we want that in an indirect form, we might see erota hostis a. She asks who you are. So you can see that the direct interrogative tis becomes an indirect interrogative hostis in our indirect question sentence. In another example, patras tout epoyesen. So that's a direct question, which one did this? So again, we have a direct interrogative, and that is going to change when we have an indirect question. Erotesamen ha patras tout epoyesen. It becomes the indirect interrogative version of the same pronoun. Now here, Erotesamen is aorist, so we're in secondary sequence. So you're also seeing that epoiesen in the indicative aorist turns into poiesen, the optative of the same tense. And this means we asked which one did this. If you don't have a direct interrogative, for instance, eripide sophos esten, is Euripides wise? then you can use the word a to introduce the indirect question. Erotaset a eripide sophos esten. 
Y'all will ask if Euripides is wise. So you can see there in English as well as in Greek, we can use the same word that means if to do this kind of work in an indirect question. In English, we might also say y'all will ask whether Euripides is wise. We have both options in English. Greek will use a. If we have an alternative question, we're going to have some options when we get to the indirect question. So say our sentence is, O Basileu, poteron boule menen e apienai. King, do you want to stay or go away? So when we turn that into an indirect question, erota ton basilea poteron buloi ta menen e apienai, our translation will be, she was asking the king whether he wanted to stay or go away. But notice a few things here. First of all, we are in secondary sequence, and so we changed into the optative. But we also switched person. In the direct question, we were asking him directly in the second person singular. But we switched to the third person once it became an uh, indirect question. And we used one of the ways to do an alternative in an indirect question. Here we use the same alternative words, poteron and a, as in the direct question. But we could also have used eta, eta. Or even a eta. Any of the three of those works nicely as indirect interrogatives and indirect questions that are posing alternatives. Now let's look at another example. Possus angelus pempes. How many messengers are you sending? Again, we have a direct interrogative word with possus. Here, it's, an in, it's a direct interrogative adjective, which is going to change into an indirect interrogative adjective with erotesa ha possus angelus pempes. So there we see the indirect interrogative version of the same adjective. And we also see here an instance where, although we are in secondary sequence, we kept the indicative in the indirect question. And so we would translate, I asked how many messengers you were sending. And for our last example, tennis asin. Who are they? There is our direct question, and we have a direct interrogative. And this example is to show you that every once in a while, a direct interrogative doesn't even change in an indirect question. We could still say erotón autus tenes an, and it stayed just the same, just as the good old direct interrogative, and we've switched into the optative because we're in secondary sequence, and we get, I was asking them who they are. So be prepared for any of these possibilities and many more as you see different examples of indirect question in Hansen and Quinn and in Greek in the wild.